Hello, my friends. Welcome to St. Michael's Church here on Hamilton Mountain. I'm the Reverend John Forbes, and it's my honor to welcome you to worship again. We begin with the Gospel of Jesus, this time from St. John, chapter 2. We begin with the first verse. Well, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rite of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them then, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. And so they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. This, my friends, is the gospel of Christ. Well, John himself uh, proclaims at the end of the gospel, I think uh, chapter 20, verse 31, the goal in writing down these miracles, these signs, is not that we should be amazed, or even that we might come to believe in Jesus. Rather, the goal is that we should bond with Jesus, abide in Jesus, and receive for ourselves the life that is in Jesus. This is good news. The gospel changes who we are. Do you remember who you were before you encountered Jesus in a significant way? I do. And I wouldn't want to be that guy for all the gold in the world. Maybe that's why this first miracle, or sign as John calls them, happens at a wedding. Because it's clear to everyone that a wedding is meant to change things. It changes relationships between individuals, between friends, families, even whole communities are changed. I gotta say, I love doing weddings. I love that two people get to stand out front and be in the spotlight in front of those they love and those that care for them and make vows to each other, to God, witnessed by a community. A community that assures them of their care and support, prays for them and celebrates the change that has happened in their lives. God created us to be together. Jesus walks with us on our way. The Holy Spirit is always present to us. (coughs) Well, you may have noticed that the reading from Isaiah focuses on a wedding as well that the very identity of the nation changes as its relationship to the Creator changes. No longer desolate or forsaken, but God's delight and married is the land of Israel. This transformation brings rejoicing and praise back to God. The wedding of God to the land is awesome. Heaven and earth are brought together, and this is a theme that we see throughout the Holy Scriptures. Remember, the point of living this life in Jesus is knowing God. And that is represented here in this wedding. It's not about a pie in the sky, let's get to heaven at the end. It's about the coming together of heaven and earth, as we see today. So Jesus comes to Cana at a wedding, and no surprise, mom is in charge. 
While Jesus seems to be annoyed with Mary, it is clearly about her timing. My hour has not yet come, he says. Jesus' ministry in this world is all about glorifying God. Let's not forget that. And clearly, Jesus is worried about letting the cat out of the bag too soon. But mom knows best, and if you want things to go smoothly, sometimes it's best to defer to others' wisdom. What is more interesting to me than a quarrel between Jesus and Mary is the fact that Mary is here at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry and also at the end, at the foot of the cross. Much is made in theology about Jesus' relationship to the Father. But for us, well, we might take a little bit more of his relationship with his mother. After all, she is pretty great. The story does something really important, though. It reveals Jesus' ministry. It reveals who he is and what he is about. It was charted in the heavens, as the Magi saw, but now we are getting a glimpse of the greatness of God and a chance to see how we might glorify God in the ordinary things of this life, well, like a wedding. It stands out to me that the one to proclaim the miracle is the steward. A servant, no one else even notices, although they probably will. The story makes it clear that this is a lot of water being turned into wine. That God is abundant from the very beginning, even if hardly anyone notices. The miracle is intangible. All the evidence will presumably be drunk or spoiled, I guess. But isn't this how it works sometimes? The greatness of God, noticed by few and praised by fewer. Still, I hope that you notice a few things about this story. As followers of Jesus, we are meant to glorify God in big and small things. To listen to others, especially the opportunity to minister to others on behalf of Jesus, to be stewards of good wine, to expect miracles, seeing God's hand in the world around us, to be witnesses, to be like the steward who tastes and sees, who proclaims the goodness of God, the abundance of God. Well, I know this has been a tough year for most of us. We've struggled personally. We've struggled with our families, even the church and the world. Well, you get enough of that in the news. So let us keep the faith. Give the gift of salvation to yourself. Hear it in the stories of Jesus. Make sure that you share this gift of salvation with others that you know. Because if you know that you are saved, then others need to know that they are too. Strengthen your relationships with others around you. And quite frankly, live a little. Jesus did. Remember that stories like this, the wine that was water, well, these are gifts of God. And they are for us the people of God. So let's give thanks to God in all that we are, in all that we do. Amen.